I love crime. I read thrillers like, uh, you know, I burn through them in literally a day or two if I, if I really find it a good one, no matter how many pages it is. I love the title of this. It can happen here, right? It couldn't happen here, yeah. It couldn't yeah. happen here. Because where I live, I know this. It's the quiet places that you just wouldn't think, what, what? So give me the setup for this and why yeah. it intrigued you so much. Well, so I went to school for this subject matter yeah. and then got a job at MTV. And so your life just like takes a hard left and you're like, okay, I'm gonna go do but this But then now. you get to hang out with rock stars I and mean, you know, that doesn't suck. It wasn't time. the worst. <laughs> But always maintained, like you, this interest in right. true crime. And I think a lot of women are into true crime because we're always prepping ourselves. Oh, we're like, shows about it. As women, like, we're so prepared to be a victim. It's like, if I can just ingest enough right. of this information, I'll prevent it from happening to me. And so what I noticed about the true crime genre is that it was really predatory. It's yeah. like, oh, the worst day of your life? Tell me more, you know? <laughs> and so if... In my head, I was like, if there's a way to do true crime that involves advocacy, yes. like what if we could get an innocent person out of prison? Right. What if you could put a guilty person behind bars? And what we've realized with our show is that the bad guy, so much of the time, is not even the person who committed the crime. Like, yeah, no duh, they're bad. But it's the prosecutor or the judge or the right. sheriff who's further victimizing these communities. So we have a show that is all about advocacy. It is about crowd participation. So for anybody who likes true crime, like, join us. Oh, I just, join us. Boom. Baby, that was a drop the mic. There's, that was a really good there's pitch. There's good work to do. She did a really good pitch. <laughs> well, that was it. It's on you and you can join participate. Us. Boom. <laughs> uh, all right, so we are going to watch a clip. Do we need a setup or we, we should watch it and then chat about it? Or, I, yeah, I don't know, I haven't it. seen it. Let's see. All let's, right, let's, all right, all right. Let's see it and I'll set you up. You know, you've got a school teacher who all these years later is trying to shed light on her student's death and all the unanswered questions that are surrounding that. And it's that level of care and compassion that we know makes small towns so special. It was just a plain, simple town with a lot of, a lot of good people in it. The people here are generally friendly, family-oriented. You don't really meet strangers. We try to get along, and we make the best of everything. small towns in a really loving light. Right. Even when awful things happen, there's a reason we love them and we live in them because there are wonderful parts to it. But this particular case was because after season one, a school teacher DM'd me on Instagram and she was like, one of my students was killed. Something is terribly wrong here. Can you guys come look at it? And we did. And you know, this case in Andrew, North Carolina is heartbreaking. So, it, And it unfolds as you watch the episode. Yeah.